Hello, this is Benton Gray from Freedom Reborn. Uh, I'm uh, a modder and I have created a, a number of different projects uh, for this uh, fantastic game over the years. Uh, it uh, recently occurred to me that it might be a good idea to create uh, some tutorials uh, to help people get into modding uh, FF. Uh, it's actually, well, it is extremely accessible uh, in context of most other uh, game mods. Uh, so there's always you know stuff to learn, there's always a learning curve, uh, and it can seem very complex and daunting at first, but FF is actually really uh, mod friendly and really user friendly. It has some fantastic tools, some fantastic uh, support and manuals, and an amazing community uh, that is really supportive and helpful uh, for, for people just starting out. So if you would like to get into this process, uh, that's what uh, this uh, uh, tutorial series is going to be all about. It's, uh, the first one's going to show you how to get the programs you need and how to set them up, uh, and then uh, introduce you to some of the, the very basics of modding, what the uh, editor does, and uh, you know, how to use it uh, for uh, some of the, the basic stuff that a lot of uh, new players won't do. And then, uh, later tutorials will cover things like map, map making and uh, even uh, mission creation. Uh, and then finally, campaign creation. Uh, so over the course of uh, these videos, I hope that uh, you'll have fun uh, learning uh, sort of how all this stuff works and that uh, seeing somebody go through it will make it a little bit more accessible and a little less daunting. Uh, all of this information used to be available uh, very easily, but uh, as the community is as age as the internet has gone on its way, uh, stuff has sort of been lost by the wayside. I've tried to put some of it on my uh, website, which you see here, uh, the Greylands. Uh, if you look under Freedom Force uh, modding resources and tutorials, you'll find a lot of the old tutorials that are still uh, present. Um, but uh, the um, the uh, you know a lot of the pictures are gone, and a lot of the resources that were referenced aren't around anymore. So. I thought this might be a good way to sort of make this a bit more accessible. All right, so uh, to get started, uh, I'm going to walk you through what you need, and I'll also have a list of these things uh, with the video, uh, sort of list and uh, links and things. Uh, you can find everything you need off of my website, uh, which links to the other uh, parts of the Free and Force community. Uh, at, if you have any questions, if you run any problems, if you're not sure what to do next, then uh, visit Free and Reborn. This is the home of the Freedom Force community, uh, and like I said, it's the best community you're going to find online. Just wonderful folks, uh, and uh, we're smaller these days, but we're still active. And you, if you if you have questions, you can post them in the modding section, uh, or you can send me uh, a message through my website. Uh, if it's specifically mod related, please do post in the forums because your questions might help other folks as well. So. Uh, that said, let's sort of get into it. So the first thing you want to do, if you haven't already, is you want to download FFX. This is, uh, FFX is a fan-made expansion uh, for Freedom Force, and it adds a ton of new content, new attributes, new powers, uh, and it reworks some of the characters for the uh, main campaign. It also gives you access to things uh, like uh, new functionality for the editor uh, in some ways, and uh, to a program called Easy uh, Script, which lets even uh, fools like me uh, create missions and campaigns. Uh, it's, it's, it's sort of like a, a, a shell that goes over the top of Python, the scripting language that the game itself runs on and the missions are created with, and allows you to write in sort of simple English, or at least simpler English, uh, your missions and campaigns. Uh, and it is incredibly useful and, uh, and very, very versatile and flexible and we'll uh, eventually, in a later video, I'll sort of show you how easy it is, and we'll cook up some missions together uh, that uh, you can actually just throw right into the game and play. So that's our first stop, and you'll find all your links down here under the blog roll on my site. If you go to uh, <clears throat> Freedom Force Forever, uh, this will take you to uh, the guy who walks by himself, uh, who uh, his site where he has hosted a lot of older Freedom Force sites uh, and sort of kept them alive for us. If you click on Freedom Force X here, that's FFX, 
uh, created by Dr. Mike and M25, two uh, scripting geniuses who created amazing stuff for the, for the uh, game and for the community. You'll find uh, the downloads here. Just download the latest version, uh, and it's got a nice installer just pointed at your Freedom Force directory, and it'll take care of itself. Note that this also comes with a fantastic manual that you can access to the website, but also is installed with FFX, and which I include in all of my mods. So uh, if you have questions, if you want to learn how to do stuff, if you just want to see like what all the new attributes are that are added, take a look at that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a lot of content that this adds. Uh, now, some of it you might want to, you know, have to you might have to reference uh, to see what it actually does. Some of them are pretty self-explanatory, like spiny. Uh, you are spiny if you have this attribute. And people are hurt if they get too close to you. So, uh, FFX adds all this stuff, but it, as I said, it also adds uh, EasyScript. So download it, uh, install it, and then uh, we'll go on to our next step. So once you've got FFX installed, <clears throat> uh, it's time to actually get the Freedom Force modding tools. Uh, this is FF Edit, uh, which uh, is sort of the uh, be all end all of Freedom Force modding. So come uh, to the Freedom Force uh, modding tools, and you want to get specifically the uh, FF2 or the Freedom Force versus the Third Reich uh, modding tools, which you'll find right here. Once again, this has a nice installer, uh, Alex. Uh, uh, of Alex's Freedom Fortress created it for us and uh, it uh, takes a lot of the work that used to be part of this out of it. So you can just once again point it at your Freedom Force directory uh, and it will install uh, easily enough. Uh, it will support both the Steam and the Gollum version as well as the CD version. So uh, once you have all of those installed, it's time to uh, get the Freedom Force editor, which so again, let's go back and I'll show you where you can find that. So find the EasyScript editor and tools here, which will take you to a media uh, fire page where you can download EasyScript, EasyScript edit. Now, when you downloaded FFX, you actually got all of the guts of EasyScript, all the stuff that keeps it, that, that makes it work, that uh, allows you to actually uh, use the, uh, the scripting that this does. EasyScript edit itself is the nice interface that uh, will actually like check your code for you and allow you to easily push the, uh, pull things in and out of the mission. And we'll cover that at a later date, but go ahead and get that and install it. Uh, I just drop it into the help folder of my Freedom Force directory so that I, I know where it is. It's in the same place as my FF stuff, but you can really put it anywhere. It'll run uh, anywhere and you set uh, its data paths in the program itself. So we won't worry about that at the moment, but go ahead and uh, get it and put it in your FF directory. So once you've got all that stuff done, uh, let's actually play with some of these new toys. So uh, one of the things that most people want to do is tweak uh, how characters play, uh, tweak what meshes characters use and things like that, and that's going to be the first thing that I show you how to do. So first off, uh, make sure you have your FF edit directory, uh, your FF edit uh, shortcut where you, uh, where you want it, open it up, now make sure you're opening <clears throat> FF Edit. Once you've installed FFX, it puts FF Edit 2 in your Freedom Force directory, uh, in your main Freedom Force uh, folder. So here's my folder. If I come down here, you're going to see FF Edit 2. Now it's FFX Edit 2, but a lot of folks get a little confused by that. This is for um, dealing with FFX stuff, and we'll cover that a little later. It's not something we need to mess with right at the moment. So uh, once you have edit open, uh, you'll see uh, something like this. Now, when you open it the first time, all of these will be blank. So don't freak out if they're all blank, because that's the way it's supposed to be. Uh, you have to put in the data paths that your copy of Freedom Force uses. Now, this can be a little bit, uh, can look a little intimidating, but it's super simple. So just open up your Freedom Force directory, <clears throat> and that's the data path you're going to put in. So your secondary data path just goes right to your Freedom Force folder uh, slash data. So that's this folder right here. That's where all of your stuff is, all of your Freedom Force stuff is. 
Now, <clears throat> before we get too much further into this, uh, if this is your very first time uh, doing anything with Freedom Force, then I need to show you how to get at all of the really cool stuff that's inside your game files that you don't necessarily have access to. You'll see that I've got all these folders right here, uh, and your data folder may not look like that if this is the first time you've messed with it because these folders came out of these FF files. So art, and sounds, and missions, uh, things like that come out of these FF folders. These uh, are just uh, archives, like a zip file, but with a format that is re read specifically by the Freedom Force game. So to uh, take, to, to uh, Open these up and get the files out. It's super simple. Just copy the file, so RFF, copy it, uh, and uh, paste it into the directory, and then uh, rename the FF to zip. It's going to warn you, you know, not to do that. You can ignore it. We know what we're doing. And now it's a directory, uh, a archive directory that you can open up. So just grab that. Uh, folder in the art, in the sounds, in the uh, <clears throat> uh, missions, and you can uh, drag them all into your data folder. So, being a little slow. There we go. Uh, you can just drag from the folder into your uh, data folder and you once again you want the art, the uh, missions, the sounds, <coughs> and uh, that should do it for the moment. Uh, that should give you what you need. Uh, those will give you access to things like the character meshes and skins, which you can find in there. It'll also give you access to uh, the individual missions of the game, uh, which you can use and edit to your heart's content, as well as the objects and textures for those missions. So for example, all the Cuba objects for the Cuban, for the Cuban missions are in here. And this can be pretty handy uh, as you start to mod and, and you want to use different objects and you want to change things out and sort of get things to be, to be the way you want them to be. So make sure you go ahead and do that step. And that will give you access to all of those different files uh, <clears throat> if you're using one of my mods, uh, or if you have one of my mods, you can use those instead of uh, your own uh, directory files, and you'll find the same basic layout. Those things have already been unpacked in those mods. So your secondary data path just points to your data folder, and that's your secondary data path is never going to change. This says uh, this is where all of the default basic information of your copy of Freedom Force is stored. So that's always the same. Your NIF library path just points to your art folder in the, your data folder. And we've just unpacked that, so it should all be there. Sound, well, same thing in your sounds folder. Uh, your game exe, that's just going to point to the actual game exe uh, in your FF directory. Now, uh, this does not have exe at the end of it, so it's just the file name, which is ffvt3r. Uh, <clears throat> Your level editor, that's going to point to uh, the same thing, but edit. So, there you go. Python, now you don't have to have a Python editor. Eventually, you'll probably want one, but we'll cover that uh, when we start messing with Python files. Uh, these you can leave blank for the moment. This is just for when you want to generate language files. So when you want to create dialogue or when you want to clean up sort of how characters, uh, names and stuff appear in the game, the names of the powers, that's uh, how we compile those files. 
but you don't need to worry about it at the moment. All right, so that uh, takes care of everything except for the primary data path. The primary data path, that points to the specific mod that we want to mess with, that we're editing. Now, uh, I had you download FFX, so you can just go straight to editing that, but what I would suggest is that you copy your FFX folder, and uh, then uh, paste it and rename it to, you know, your mod or whatever name you want it to have. Uh, you know, all my mod folders have a specific name uh, that makes them easily recognizable. So if I wanted to edit DCUG, my DC mod, I would type its name in there. If I wanted to edit the Marvel mod, Marvel Adventures, I would do that. But whatever I do, uh, that is the mod folder that we're going to be actually editing. So any changes we make here won't be reflected in the basic default game, and they won't be reflected in other mods, which is good, because if we make a mistake, then we don't have to restore the entire game. Uh, so always make sure that your data path, your primary data path, is pointed where you want it to be. <clears throat> now, we're going to uh, mess around in FFX3 uh, uh, for the moment, but once you change your data path, it's a good idea to close FF edit and open it back up so that uh, it knows to read from that folder. It usually does fine about doing that, but you know uh, this is just sort of a way to be safe. Now, you'll see a number of other tabs here. Do not touch any of them yet. Uh, campaign here, this is uh, the campaign tab. It's what you use to uh, put the different missions together that make a campaign. But if you press that button, uh, without actually then composing a campaign, it'll mess up your game and it won't play. So uh, if that happens, then what you do is you come into the folder that you changed, your mod folder that you're editing, you find your camp de uh, def dat and delete that. Because what ha what's happened is that it's generated a new campaign that's messing everything up. So delete that. And I'll show you uh, when, we t when we get to putting uh, missions together to create campaigns, I'll show you uh, how to actually do this safely. Well, for the moment, stay away from that tab. So the other tabs are going to be pretty self-explanatory for the most part. Your missions tab, uh, this is how you create your missions and your maps. Uh, it's not specifically for coding missions or scripting missions. It's specifically for creating and editing the maps. Your characters, this is your cast of characters. Now, note that every character uh, entity in the game has two parts. Uh, in FF Edit. It has the character part and it has the template part. So the character part is the powers and the attributes and the uh, stats, whereas the templates part is going to be uh, the type of material it is, the mesh it uses. It's sort of more like uh, logistical information about the character. You have to have entries in both lists for a character to be recognized and uh, show up in the game. <clears throat> so uh, this is how we do basic character editing. Uh, and a lot of the sort of fine-tuning you'll do in mods and character balancing and things like that might have to be done here. So uh, it's very simple to use. It's going to be very similar to the uh, built-in character editor in the game itself. So you just pick a character. Let's check out, let's check out Blackjack here. And uh, you'll see his name, which you can edit by renaming him. You'll see his stats. Uh, you know, their, layer, their levels can all be changed however you want. Uh, and you'll see his origin story, which uh, is just a, uh, you know, mostly applicable uh, to uh, the uh, built-in characters. It's something that you could create your own versions of, but that's pretty complex, and I won't get to that uh, probably anytime soon. Uh, the AI uh, that the character uses. Now, you can set specific AIs. Uh, that sort of determine what kind of behaviors they use, but generally I use M25 a, uh, M25's AI generator, uh, which comes with FFX uh, and is very handy. So uh, if you want to though, like you can uh, tell a character to act like a certain class of character, but be aware that if you do that, the game is going to expect them to have similar kinds of powers. For example, uh, you'll see under here uh, C uh, worker ant. That's going to expect that your character is going to have uh, a strong melee attack and it's going to attempt to use that. So if your character doesn't have that, 
then, or and especially if it's not like first up in the list, uh, the AI is going to be confused. It's not quite going to know what to do with them. Uh, same for the gun. It's going to expect that your character is going to have a range attack, and it's going to expect it to be in a certain position. So um, you want to sort of have a sense of how these how these AIs work before you start assigning them to different characters. Uh, you'll also know the speech ID. And now we have uh, on Freeman Reborn a uh, list of speech IDs, uh, which we just updated, I believe. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Here we go. So this lists all of the different speech IDs and who they belong to, including all of the various fan-made expansions. So you're going to see, you know, this is a pretty long list. Uh, some of my voice packs are on here, um, and sometimes there's some crossover. For example, look, look at all the GGs there are. Uh, but um, if you want to create your own voice packs, which, once again, I'll cover at a later date, uh, then this list is a really useful reference because it'll let you know what voice IDs are already taken so that you can set your voice packs up to work with anything else in the game that has already been put out for the game. <clears throat> uh, and also is a quick reference for the different Freedom Force characters. Uh, for example, uh, we were just looking at Blackjack, so he's BJ in his uh, voice ID. We can find that right there. So let's say we want him to sound like Minuteman. So we just come down here. Minuteman's is, as you might expect, MM. We come back to Freedom Reborn. Uh, we come back to Free uh, FF Edit. We just change that to MM. Uh, and now Blackjack will sound like Minuteman anytime he's talking. Uh, up here you'll notice this campaign only checkbox. You want to check this for any character you want to show up like as a regular character in the game. If you want them to show up in the heroes list or the villains list, if you want them to show up in the campaigns, uh, then uh, you want to check this box. If you don't, then they'll only show up in the multiplayer lists when you're choosing characters and looking at the character lists. Um, <clears throat> there are times where you want to do that if you're just putting in you know, minions or something like that. But if, you, if you're creating new heroes to be part of the campaign or be part of a particular campaign that you're creating, then you definitely want to check that box. Uh, move radius. This here uh, is really cool. It's something that is not going to be an issue for most of the characters that you're going to create. But let's say you want to create a big, uh, sort of monstrous character, something that's really huge, like Mr. Mechanical. Uh, Mr. Mechanical is in a giant uh, robot. Uh, his move radius is 3. You'll see that's higher. Uh, so the move radius basically tells the game uh, how big the character is and sort of how much space they need to move around. So set it higher for giant characters. In my DC mod, uh, Giganta has a higher move radius. In my Marvel mod, Giant Man, his biggest form, has a higher radius. So uh, if, you, if that is something that uh, ends up being useful to you, uh, that's where you'll find it. Now your powers list, uh, this is all the different powers that are in the game, and as you might imagine, they're found in the powers tab, uh, or can be created in the powers tab and edited there. For the moment, we won't worry about that. But you can choose whatever you want from the list uh, and add them to these boxes here. Now tier A, or tier a and tier B, uh, these are determine which of the two boxes uh, in the campaign uh, that your powers show up in, so you could split powers up and like have a a tier A, which is all melee powers, and a tier B that's all uh, range powers, or you know, it could be like Martian Manhunter, and it could be shape changing powers in one and uh, mental powers in another. But that's all just purely uh, aesthetics. It doesn't have any impact on gameplay. The thing that does have an impact on gameplay is this number down here. So if we come back to another sort of uh, main campaign character, a hero, you'll see that these numbers uh, are different here. And he's got um, uh, you know, four powers here, five powers there. These numbers actually reflect those. But somebody like Blackjack, you'll notice that his numbers are three and three. What this determines is what uh, number of powers and what level of power the character starts with. So if you want to have a campaign where your characters actually gain experience and can unlock powers and buy uh, upgrades and things, then you can change what level they start at. Or if you just want them to have everything at first, right at the beginning, then set both of these to six, and they'll have all their powers, and their powers will all be at level three. Attributes is the same. You, you have um, the list of attributes here, which of course you can change and edit in the attributes uh, tab. 
and you can uh, add them there and set their level here. You don't actually have to set a six there because, of course, attributes can't be upgraded, but a five will do the trick. <clears throat> now, uh, so as I said, if you want to create a new character, you just hit the new button, um, or you could copy an existing character. But if you do so, you have to make sure you have a corresponding entry in the templates tab. So let's take a look at that. So templates. Well, first off, uh, we can do some sorting because there's a lot of templates uh, in Freedomforce, and especially in my mods and, and game in my mods like DC, uh, the DCUG and uh, Marvel Adventures, where I've added a ton of characters and props and things. This list can be quite long. Uh, so we can say we want all of them, or we can say we just want the characters, or just want the props or the objects. So the objects gives you just things like you know your boulders, your buildings, cars. Characters give you characters. Let's take a look at Blackjack again. Uh, so we have his name, and that has to be exactly the same as the entry in characters. If you have an extra space, if you have any you know any kind of character that's different, uh, then the character won't show up properly. So make sure that those are matching. And I, I've <laughs> I have made that mistake more than once. Uh, in terms of class, this is the kind of object that you're creating, kind of template that you're creating, and there's a bunch of different types. So uh, just as Freedom Force, uh, uh, Freedom Force X, FFX, comes with a really nice manual, so does FF Edit. And I'm going to walk you through how all of this works, but if you have questions, if you want to uh, sort of get a, a, a simpler uh, you know, visual explanation of some of these things, then you can find that in the manual. If you open up the index, uh, that's installed under the help folder once you install it. Uh, the uh, mod tools. If we open up the index, we'll have the whole uh, range of manuals for FF Edit, including all of its different parts, uh, which can be really handy. Uh, I really wish I had dug into this more when I started uh, modding because there's a lot of great information here. But so if we come over to uh, templates, they'll have an explanation of what all the different classes are. I'm just going to cover some of the basic ones, uh, some of the ones that you most likely use. Uh, and then if you want to reference uh, you know, what all of the others are and what they do, that's where you'll find it. So a hero, obviously that's a hero character, somebody who could be used in the campaign or who could show up in missions or be available to recruit. Uh, villain, uh, villain is a you know, named villain, so um, <clears throat> Mr. Mechanical or uh, Nuclear Winter, or if you're in the DCUG mod, Lex Luthor or the Joker, things like that. Uh, generic. This is um, all of the props that are not in other categories. So this is like sort of the catch-all. If it's a boulder, if it's a street light, if it's a um, <clears throat> bush or a tree, all of that is a generic object. Uh, building is, as you might expect, buildings, uh, and they behave a little different. Now you'll notice that um, uh, also civilians, uh, you can have civilians uh, which will run away from uh, villains and behave like the civilians in the game. But uh, here's a really important warning. <clears throat> if you add civilians to your game and you're using FFX, uh, FFX and uh, you're using uh, EasyScript, uh, that can really mess things up because civilians aren't treated the same way as villains and minions and heroes and cops. So uh, I would just advise not adding civilians. If you want to add a civilian type character, just set them to be a cop or a minion, uh, and that'll really make your life easier. I'll cover exactly what this does when we get into how to uh, set up uh, easy script missions and things like that, uh, but just trust me and uh, try to avoid adding civilians. I, I have a huge headache every time I go back to edit the DCUG because I added in civilian characters. Uh, so minions, uh, these are sort of your, your henchmen, uh, so Nuclear Winter's troops or um, the Nazis that show up in the game, these are sort of the, the generic faceless hordes. Uh, your police, uh, these are you know, police characters, but also they're characters that are um, that will help the heroes in fights. So if you want to have you know, ally characters, um, like uh, say you want to create um, some sort of positive henchmen. So uh, you have a hero who can summon um, support. Uh, or uh, like Booster Gold, you have Skeets that you want to have follow him around. You can create that as a police character uh, and they'll support the hero in combat. 
uh, vehicles. These are you know cars, trucks, things like that, and they'll uh, actually move around the map uh, if set up properly. Uh, and if we uh, look at what's uh, under this, you'll see the material type uh, is flesh for blackjack. Uh, so uh, all the material types that exist in the game uh, are here, plus a couple of hidden ones it's like concrete or cloth. Uh, and uh, these um, have uh, some slightly different uh, resistances, and you can find the uh, links to the resistances uh, sort of what those are at Alex's Freedom Fortress under the goodies. Uh, or actually, I think it's under the uh, FAC. Yeah, there it is, the original charts. So they include um, uh, all of the regular ones. Uh, concrete is similar to stone, but it's a little tougher, has a couple extra resistances. Uh, you can see what those are like in Alex's uh, Hero, uh, Easy Hero, which if you haven't downloaded, that's another uh, great tool that you should get. So uh, you can choose whatever uh, material type you want for your heroes or your villains, and you can also change the mesh that they use. So for example, uh, once again, let's say we want uh, Blackjack to look like Minuteman. Well, we can actually go into our Freedom Force directory and find out what Minuteman, Minuteman's mesh is named, what its data path is. <clears throat> and we can change this to point to him. Always double check your spelling and uh, make sure that you are getting everything right because obviously if you get this, uh, if you misspell something here and you have extra characters, then uh, your character won't have a mesh in the game. But this actually points to the 3D model that this character uses. If you change a character's 3D model, make sure that its keyframes can support the powers that you've chosen for that character. Uh, for example, uh, Blackjack has several ranged animations uh, that Minuteman uh, may not have. So we would have to go back and edit those powers and make sure they correspond to the animations that Minuteman used. But this is a great way to uh, sub in uh, characters sort of very easily. Uh, you could just rename Blackjack uh, and make him look like Batman and give him Batman's powers. And then you could use him in the campaign exactly like Blackjack. Uh, but also this is a way to change and update uh, meshes in general. Uh, now, under attribute over overrides, you're going to see a lot of different uh, lines here, and you'll see that those will change depending on the character we click on. And if we click on, you know, a uh, boulder or something like that, it's going to change as well. Now, um, for characters, there's only really a couple of things that we need to worry about here. But once again, uh, I encourage you to go to the uh, the documentation and see what the attributes uh, actually do these object attributes. They have a complete comprehensive description of each of them. Uh, and they can be pretty opaque if you're just you know looking at the uh, actual uh, description right here. If you're just looking at the name, uh, so it can be a little bit unclear what they are. So check that out if you you know start digging in deeper and you want to see what does this actually mean. Uh, but so for your characters, uh, obviously your mass is, is how heavy they are. Uh, heavier mass, the less they'll suffer from knock knockback and things like that. So you could make Blackjack a little tougher in combat by making him heavier. Uh, or you could make him a whole lot lighter and make him really susceptible to knockback. Uh, elasticity, well, I've actually forgotten what that one is, so we'll come over here and see what it does. Uh, it's percentage from 0 to 1 how bouncy an object is. So uh, there are you know rubber objects and things like that that things can actually bounce off of in the game because it has a nice physics engine. So uh, most of the objects are going to be zero elasticity. Uh, you don't even have to include that for an object, uh, for a character. Uh, it's going to default to zero. So pickup distance, it just tells you know how far away the character is going to be from something they're going to pick up. Uh, this is really handy for customizing uh, your meshes and characters. So say you have a bigger character, uh, so you're talking about Giant Man at his 12-foot form. Well, he can pick up things from further away, so you could 
raise that number uh, and see, sort of dial it in so that it looks right when he picks objects up on the map. Use voice. If you want to have a voice ID assigned to the character, you have to have use voice set to one. Uh, most of these are uh, sort of binary, so it's either one or zero. A lot of these uh, different uh, different entries. Uh, so it's either on or off, or off. You'll also see complex right here. Now uh, this is specific to FFX. Uh, it's something that is native to the game, but FFX has made use of it. So characters. Uh, for FFX are branded or marked with a specific complex number and this lets uh, all of the cool scripts and stuff that FFX uses identify particular characters. So um, if I have a character with a particular attribute that uses scripted things and I bring him into a mission, the complex uh, number lets the game know, hey, I have to do this stuff for that character. Uh, it's something that you don't really need to mess with. It's always going to be created for you uh, by using the FFX editor, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, but uh, then we come down here to skin, uh, and this is where you can actually change the skin of a character. So uh, most of uh, the characters in the default game don't come with multiple skins, uh, but there are a lot of skins that you can get for these characters. Uh, for example, I don't believe Blitzkrieg has, has any, but... Pretty sure uh, El Diablo does, so he'll be a good example. El Diablo skins, and you'll see all of these different skins. So if I want El Diablo to look like an old tiny version of himself, I can come to El Diablo, and for the skin, I can write in Ed 1880, which is a uh, Old West uh, skin for El Diablo. Now, if I were to load him up in the game, he would have that skin. Uh, once again, uh, if you're adding characters and you're changing things around, uh, this is how you uh, can uh, sort of tweak things a little further. This is particularly important because a lot of Freedom Force uh, content, a lot of stuff that's been created by the community, uh, has standard skins as well as uh, you know other skins. And oftentimes the one you want isn't necessarily the standard skin. So... Uh, for example, here's an Atlantean, a DC Atlantean that uh, Cyberburn uh, made for me. And uh, his skins, his standard, was originally just a wireframe, just sort of a placeholder. So if I were to put him in the mod, <clears throat> I would want to specify a different skin for him uh, so that uh, you know I would have the one I wanted and not just the placeholder. All right, so that's pretty much everything you need to know about the templates uh, tab. Uh, powers uh, is going to work pretty much uh, intuitively the way you'd expect. You can edit powers, you can add new powers, uh, copy old powers. Uh, I generally like to copy rather than just add new because it fills in a lot of the boxes for me already and I can take something that's similar to what I want. Say I want a projectile attack and copy that, rename it whatever I want. And uh, then my cool projectile, I can change, make it faster, make the range longer. Uh, you can do things in uh, the editor that you can't do in the regular game. For example, you can set the range to infinite and have uh, you know, a big cannon that can dominate the entire map. Uh, you can um, change the animations uh, that go with it. You can change the attached effects. Now, uh, Obviously, this is not a visual editor right here for the FX, so you'll have to figure out what the name for the FX you want to attach it to is. Uh, so I often like jump back and forth between the game and the editor. But you can change all the different stats about it. Uh, if you want a special uh, attack, that's going to override everything else up here. So for example, let's say I want to clone a target or something like that. Uh, then I set it here, and then it doesn't matter what damage type I've chosen up here. Uh, it's gonna, that's gonna override that. There's also a number of flags that you can set uh, for power. So let's say that this is a beam. Let's say I want to make it uh, penetrating. I want to make it go through uh, objects and hit anything behind it. I can do that. Or let's say uh, this is a melee attack, and I want it to be able to hit flyers. Well, there's a really cool uh, thing you can only do in the editor that you can't do in the uh, built-in hero creator. 
if you click dinosaur, uh, then uh, the attack will be able to uh, reach up and hit flying attackers. You'll obviously want to have an uh, animation that looks good with that, but it gives you that option. And you can also do things like area attack uh, or uh, you know knockback self. All of these different options. Note that if you choose area attack, it will always be 360. So the only way to get um, a narrower range, a narrower, narrower, narrower uh, uh, radius for the attack, is to choose an existing uh, area attack from the powers list that uh, already has that radius, or to import it from the hero creator, which I'll show you all how to do in a little bit. Defenses is going to be basically the same way. You can choose the type of damage blocked, you can choose the animations and all that, success rate. Uh, attributes. Now, uh, this is not as useful as you might hope it would be, or as you might expect it to be. You can only create new attribute names here. You can't actually create new attributes through this. Uh, however, you can, through uh, FFX, create new combinations of attributes to create new attributes. And I'll uh, sort of walk you through that in a later uh, a later um, tutorial. Uh, sounds, you can edit the different sounds the game uses, uh, including creating uh, new ambient sounds, uh, new uh, you know sounds associated with particular characters or cars, uh, or sound effects. If you come down to FX, these are all the different sound effects for the FX, uh, which you find in the FX tab. So, AFF iBeam has a sound effect over here, uh, and you'll notice that uh, each of these has uh, numbers next to them at the end of them, uh, and that's the start, the middle, and the finish of an FX. Not all of them have all of them, not all of them have all three options, uh, but if you want to create new FX, uh, you can sort of mess around with these options. Uh, and I won't uh, get too far into this, uh, but uh, this is where you'll find that information uh, if you want to sort of mess around with those things. The resources tab is one that um, is only really uh, applicable for if you want to create a full-scale mod. So you want to create a mod that has like talking heads and or at least portraits that show up uh, and that maybe has different art or different things that happen in it. Uh, you'll find a lot of that stuff under the resources tab. You can change, you can add music to the uh, mod or change what the music does. You can um, <clears throat> change parts of the interface, uh, change what they point to, and I'll actually show you how to change the background images uh, to get the cool effects like I did in DCUG and, uh, and MA uh, to have sort of your own customized art for those things. But if you want to add a new character and you also want him to be able to talk or her to talk in the campaign, then you also need an anim portrait. So this is just an animated portrait. Uh, and uh, if you uh, have the uh, mesh you want for your character, then uh, you can point this to that mesh. You also have to have a head nif. Now, <clears throat> in any of my mods, you'll find all of the different characters have uh, head nifs in them. So if we come to Marvel Adventures here, art, library, characters, all of them come with a head nif. This is the uh, sort of placeholder head nif that uses the portrait instead of an animated head uh, because of course you have to have an animated head that fits your character and there's not really that many of those. Um, <clears throat> there are packs of like you know customizable ones, and uh, Tommy Boy made uh, a head that you could like had a bunch of different uh, versions of different heads on it, and you could scope out uh, or add in and take out pieces to it to make it look like whatever you wanted to. But that's a bit more advanced than I usually like to get for it, so I just use this sort of standard um, blank slate, uh, which puts up whatever portrait you have selected for the character in there. Uh, but you'll find this in any of my mods. Uh, you can copy it and put it into your own uh, character's mesh, and away you go. So just point that at uh, your character and you're good. Now, uh, I want to point out one last thing before we move on, uh, which is 
Uh, note the data path here, and it's, you'll find the same basic data path in the template section. Note that it's library characters, whatever else, or library, whatever else. Um, this is really important because if you put the whole data path, if you put this whole thing in there, then it's only going to work for people who have uh, FreeNFORCE installed in exactly the same place you do. So if you use the shortened version, <clears throat> it's just going to tell the game, so go wherever the game is and then look in this directory, which also helps it because it'll look in your specific mod that your game is running out of. All right. <clears throat> so that sort of gives you some of the basics of FFEdit uh, and sort of lets you know where everything is and sort of what it can do. Uh, we'll look at this in a lot more depth in uh, future tutorials, but uh, this gives you what you need to create new characters, add them to the game, uh, to uh, <clears throat> edit powers, uh, to sort of really customize your game as you want to.